So a while back, I made a video about how to find dropshipping suppliers that are based in the United States. And since making that video, it's become the most viewed video on my channel. And underneath that video, I got a lot of comments and different questions asking about things that I failed to address in, in the video. So in this video, I'm going to be answering all of those questions. I'm gonna be taking the most popular questions as well as the things that I think are going to help you grow your business and that are going to fill in the gaps. So in this video, I'm going to show you the complete breakdown of how you're going to find suppliers and then how you can contact them and then start working with them. In the previous video, I showed how to find suppliers using retail sites like Etsy, Wayfair and House, and still a method that I use myself. And I think it's actually a really good method because you're going onto these retail sites and you're finding products that these companies sell. And then you're going in and contacting these companies to see if you can actually start working with them. Another reason that I like contacting companies on retail sites, mainly that are sites selling in the US, like House and Wayfair, is that these companies are catering to a mainly US customer base. And I drop ship on Amazon, eBay, and I also have my own website. And most of my customers are located in the US, which means I need fast shipping times, high quality items, and I really, most importantly, need to be able to reach out to the company, discuss if something's going on, maybe return, whatever it is, I need to make sure that they're able to understand me and that it's going to happen effectively. Also in the previous video, I showed how you can find US suppliers on Alibaba and on AliExpress. Now those are not exclusively US suppliers. Most of those suppliers are actually Chinese manufacturing companies, international manufacturing companies, and they just happen to have factories and warehouses in the US that they can go out and ship from. Still, the shipping times are relatively long and the quality is not all that great. So just to reiterate what I went over in the last video, the way that I find suppliers is I either use Google or if I really do wanna use these retail sites, what I'll do is, is I'll go on the sites and I'll just search for whatever's selling best. So Etsy will typically show you what's a best seller. You can also search by category. And also a lot of Etsy sellers do sell on house. So you might see some of the same products and some of the same sellers, but typically I'll just go and I'll find an item and I'll just contact the supplier and I'll just message them asking if I can actually sell their products. So on Etsy, what I'll normally do is I'll go to a product, I'll go to the store page of this seller, and then on the store page, either it's going to give me their website, they might also link their email, or the also you have the contact feature, which you'll see right here at the top of the page. And if you scroll down, you'll see contact shop owner. And typically I'll just do that and I'll shoot them a message. And sometimes they will reply, sometimes they won't. A lot of times they'll say that they can't do it. And sometimes you might be able to find a new drop shipping supplier that is located in the United States. Now the process is very similar on a lot of other retail sites, but just to show you it on house, typically I'll just go ahead and I'll find an item. You could always go ahead and Google the company if you can't find it, or if they don't really have a contact feature. Another thing that you can also do is on house, underneath product specifications, you just go and you'll see who it's manufactured by. And then you go ahead and you open this link in another tab and that will bring you up. And then you can just basically go ahead, contact them, follow them, or you might even be able to Google them, find their email or find their website and contact them using that method. Now, this is a question that I was asked a lot underneath that last video. This was probably the most requested question that I got asked. And the question was, how do you go ahead and contact them once you actually find them? How do you actually start working with them? So the answer to this is actually relatively simple. I have a template that I use that I will send to prospective suppliers and the template is actually relatively simple and it's mainly just this, what you see on the screen. It's hello and then you put their contact name and then my name is and then your business name. We are and then you can either put in a home decor, you could put in a games, whatever type of business that you are that mainly sells on eBay and Amazon. Again, you can switch those out for Shopify or you can put your website or you can just put whatever platform that you want to sell on. Working with wholesale companies, I am contacting you to inquire about drop shipping and selling your items. We work with a few other Etsy sellers, or you can say hows, or you could just say we work with a few other companies as well as other wholesalers. We would only put the items on the marketplace, or again, we would like to start selling your products. Looking forward to working with you. Thank you. Now, these are just a simple template I'd use anything like this, I might even switch it up a little bit depending on the supplier, but this is the initial message that I will always send out to a supplier that I find on a retail site. If I find them on Google, if I find them using Facebook, if I find them using a different method, then I might send them a different message. 
So this is mainly just if I find them off of Etsy, if I find them on House, or if I find them on a retail site that other customers are going to be able to go on. So just to show you an example of sending a supplier a message, this was a supplier that I found on Etsy who was selling planters, and I actually really wanted to start working with them. I thought their items would do well on eBay and Etsy, especially since I do already sell a lot of planters. So I contacted them, I shot them a message, and ultimately it actually didn't work. I heard back from them, but they told me that their items were too expensive, that they just started, and that they weren't really interested in dropshipping. So ultimately they said that they would get back to me, but they never did. And that was in April and it never actually started working. Now to put that into contrast with a message that I sent on October 31st, which was not too long ago. And in this message, I just contacted another supplier. I wanted to see if I could start selling their items. And then they actually got back to me about three hours ago before filming this video. And they said that they were interested, but they wanted to know more about how they were going to do everything. What were the logistics? And that brings us up to the next question, because that was the second most common request that I actually got is how do you place orders? What do you do? How do you work it out? What are the logistics of actually working with a supplier? Now, the next step for actually starting to work with different suppliers, as well as what you do after the initial message is going to completely differ upon the different suppliers that you are contacting. Some suppliers are actually going to be bigger companies that might already have a wholesale website that they'll just basically let you create an account. Then you can go ahead and place orders. And that is extremely simple. And that is basically the easiest way that you can do this. Another way is that they might just be a small company. They might only sell on Etsy or they might sell on Etsy and house. And then you contact them and they're actually interested and they're going to let you sell on eBay and Amazon, but they have no idea how to do this. They're asking you all the questions because they've never done this. You've never done this. So how do you continue from there? Now, some of the main things that you always want to ask a new supplier before you start working with them are the pricing. How much is something going to cost? How much is going to cost you? Do you go off the pricing of the website that you found them on? What is it going to be for the total? How is it going to work out for the price of shipping? So that's probably one of the main things. Another thing is ordering, how you are going to order products. Are you going to do it through email? Are you going to do it through the site? Are they going to give you a coupon? Also payment, that's another big thing. Are you going to pay them through PayPal? These are some of the three biggest things that I always try to establish right from the get-go. Some other things that you always want to establish are how you're going to handle returns. If they're going to allow you to just basically return an item, are they going to charge you the shipping? Is there going to be a restocking fee? So that's a really other important aspect. Another thing is the item catalog. Do they have a catalog with all of their items? Do they have wholesale prices in that catalog? How are they going to be able to update you on what's in stock and what's out of stock? So those are another couple of things that you might want to ask them. Another thing that I always ask them is, can I use the photos on Etsy or on their website for when I actually upload the items? Do they mind if I sell on Etsy or on eBay? And basically once you establish all of the guidelines, once you've actually established the price, once you've actually established, can you use their photos, the returns, the payments, those are basically all of the different things. And then I go ahead and I start listing their items. I also just want to add that you can always ask them in the future. If something comes up, they should be able to answer any of your questions. If they're a really good supplier, I've worked with suppliers who are brand new to this. And as we're working this out, as I'm uploading their items and sending them orders, things do come up. And then I'll just basically ask them right there and then. And sometimes they're not so good about it. A lot of the times they are, and you can just work it out if something does come up. So the next thing is just finding which of their items sell well. Now I typically like to upload all of the different items onto my website, onto Amazon and eBay. Some people like to focus on only a specific item or only on a few items. So the way that you can do this is you can go to either Etsy or house or whatever. And typically all of these sites will tell you what's the best seller. So on Etsy, it will tell you what's the best seller right next to the product. Another way that you can do it is you can go to the store's reviews and in the reviews, you can actually see which item is getting the most reviews, or you can just see which items are actually being highly reviewed, which ones you maybe should avoid. And this way you can just get a good idea of which products you should be selling from the supplier. So once you've started listing the items, then you're probably going to start getting some sales. And once you get your first order, you're going to need to know how to place it as well as how you're actually going to pay your supplier. Different suppliers are going to process the orders in different ways. The most common way is that they're going to have a wholesale website. You're going to log into the wholesale website. The price that you're going to pay will be the wholesale price. After you go ahead and order it, then you're going to need to put in the customer's information and they'll just ship it out to the customer and you can pay by credit card. You can pay by PayPal. Sometimes that's typically the most common way that it's done. Another thing that I do with a lot of different suppliers is I'll actually email them. So if an item gets ordered, then I'll just go ahead and I'll send them an email. I'll tell them which item I'll tell them which quantity. If it's a certain variation, I might tell them the color 
And then in the order, I will also send the buyer's address. And then sometimes I'll even pay them through PayPal. Sometimes I'll either pay them on their website. There are different ways that you can do it. But this is another common way is a combination between email and PayPal. And another really good thing about this is that you can also automate this. So you can have a software that's connected to either your eBay store or your Amazon. And once a certain item gets ordered, then the software will automatically send an email to the other email address, which is going to be your supplier. So it will automatically send the buyer's address as well as it will also send the item. And this way you don't actually have to do anything. You might have to go ahead and pay them through PayPal. You can also establish terms. And what that means is that at the end of the month, let's say you do a total of a thousand dollars worth of orders, then you can just go ahead and PayPal them a thousand dollars. There are just different ways that you can work with suppliers. And that's another common way that I do order and that I do pay suppliers. So the last main way that I do place orders is I use the wholesalers retail site. Now that might sound confusing, but a lot of wholesalers will only have their own retail site where they do sell to customers and they'll give you a special coupon or a special code that you can actually put in at checkout and this will activate the wholesale price. This way you can check out normally, you can just put in the buyer's information and this way you'll get a discount and then they'll ship out the item. So that's another way that I do place orders and typically you can either pay through PayPal or you can even use a credit card. As a side note, I do like using a credit card as my main payment method. This way I get to keep track of all of my expenses on one card also, I get to get money from cash back and also from sign up bonuses. And probably the best reason is that it really does help with keeping track of business expenses, especially during tax season when you want to do a bunch of write offs. Now, the last component to working with all these suppliers is what do you do after you place the order? Now, it's going to depend on the handling time of the supplier. Typically, a lot of my suppliers will send out the tracking number within one to two business days and they will always offer fast shipping times. Again, it's going to depend on the handling time of your supplier, but always I get a tracking number. And if you don't get a tracking number, this is why it's really important to be able to contact your supplier. This way you can go ahead and email them or call them to see if the item has been shipped. So that's going to cover the entire process of how I contact suppliers, how I find them, how do I order and how do I also do payment. Another question that I got was how do I deal with returns? This is also going to depend on the supplier, but most suppliers will accept returns, especially if the item is damaged, they will always accept their returns. This is why I always make sure that I work with good suppliers. If the item arrives damaged, then the supplier will take fault for it. Sometimes they might not accept returns if the item is not damaged, but that will always depend on the supplier and you can always make sure and validate this information before you start working with them. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, that's the entire process of how I go ahead and find these suppliers and how I start working with them. I actually have found a lot of suppliers using this. I still work with a lot of suppliers using these different methods. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next video.